Welcome to this technical briefing from NetForge Technologies, which focuses on packet capture, more specifically Wireshark. A Wireshark can be used to troubleshoot network problems, and you can also use it to find out what people are doing on a network. So let's map out a simple network here. So at the core of this network here, I'm, I have got a switch. Now, most networks nowadays will have what's known as a managed switch. And off my switch here, I've got one or more routers connecting my office to remote sites. And I also have got a firewall connection here, connecting this office to the internet. And hanging off my switch, I might have many, many, many PCs, or even I may have other switches connecting users to the core of the network. So at the core of the network here, there's a switch. Now in your network, if you want to do a search for terms like port mirroring, sometimes called spanning, or an older switch is sometimes called roaming port analysis, you will find there's an option on these switches which allows you to mirror traffic from a port to another port on, on this particular switch. So what you need to do is go to wireshark.org, download Wireshark, and connect your laptop or PC to the core switch, or to the switch, certainly where your routers connect or where your firewall connection connects. So if you plug your PC in there and you enable what's known as port mirroring. The source port, in my case here, if I want to find out why the bandwidth on the internet connection is being used up, I will mirror this port here and I will send a copy of all the traffic to this port here. So we will get a copy of all the traffic that's going in and out the internet connection. I can do the same thing here if I want to find out what traffic is going to and from remote sites, I can enable port mirroring here and send it to this port here where my PC or laptop is connected. And some switches allow you to do multiple ports to one. So you'll see the term called many to one being referenced. So many, many ports to a single port here, which is our analysis port. We install, as I said, we install Wireshark on our PC here. We set up the mirroring and we start capturing all information from these two ports here. We'd leave that running for a couple of minutes and no point in leaving this running for, for days on end, you'll just end up with so much data it becomes almost impossible to analyze. But certainly we can leave it running for a couple of minutes, maybe even an hour on a, on a network that's not too busy. And what we'll do then is we're going to analyze this data. So in a, in a certain part of these videos, we're going to take a look at if you've got a capture file, so what the Wireshark application does, it creates a capture file. So if you've got a capture file, what, do you, what, what can you do with it then? What type of information can you get from this? How easy is it to find out what people are doing on your, either your WAN connections to your remote sites or on your firewall connections? So why is your internet connection so busy? So we're going to take a look at that in, in the next video. So I've connected my laptop to the core switch and I've enabled port mirroring. So before I can actually see what sort of data is coming in from the mirror port, in my case, the internet connection, I need to go to capture, click on interfaces, and take a look here, whatever interface where we see some packets coming in. Now in my case here, it's the gigabit interface card where the traffic is coming in on. So I'm just gonna click on start. And the Wireshark application starts processing the packets of data that's coming into this laptop and it's the mirror traffic from the core. And this is a passive way of monitoring your network. So you're not interfering in the network's operation. You're not interfering with the users. You didn't install any software on the user's PCs. We're merely taking a copy of the traffic as it goes through the switch, and we're analyzing it on this screen here. Now, if you, you should leave this running at least for a couple of minutes, maybe longer. And what you need to do then is you need to stop the capture, and you need to save that off. So I'm just going to click Save As here. And you need to save off that particular uh, file. Now, the extension it uses here is a .pcap file. So you'll often hear it being referenced as a .pcap file. Or you know, some people will say, well, I've got a tool which analyzes .pcap files. And this is what they're referencing as the .pcap extension, which is a packet capture file. So that's how we can plug something into a network, get a copy of the data, and, and store that information for processing at a later stage. Now, you may be able to take a look at the list here, and you may be able to figure out yourself what's happening. So here is a machine on my network connecting to another local machine on my network. Looks like it's over SMB, so Microsoft Server Messaging Blocks. 
Further down here, I can see some external IP addresses connecting into a PC. And if I see a lot of, of, of a machine, so here's this particular PC here again, lots and lots of external connections. It may be worth checking what applications are installed on that. So what you could do is you could go through this long list of um, connections, take a look and see if there's anything unusual. However, in a follow-up video in this series, we're going to take a look at how you can actually use the Langardian system, which has been developed by Net4 Technologies, and how we can use this to analyze a packet capture file to find out what is happening on a network.